join with us as we sing today this song, Famous For.
pray for everyone at home right now who needs that extra strength, that courage to face whatever situation they find themselves in right now. God, would you be with them? Would you hold their hand through it? Would they know that they are seated with you in the heavenly place? That is where they belong, right beside you, God. And that, of course, is our is your plan for us in heaven one day in eternity but right now you are with us right now our God is with you so be confident today trust him knowing that he's won it all already amen
God, we know that the hard work comes in our actions. Or we can sing this over and over again, but we know that the hard work comes when, when we bring hope, when we bring love and unity to the world around us. So Jesus, would you be revealed in us? That is our prayer. And we are willing to pay the cost to bring that to the world. That is our prayer. Well, welcome to our Sunday service. My name is Pastor Dennis Boudreaux. I want to continue on the book of Judges, and I want to look at Samson today. I'm doing a series on Avengers. That's what the judges were, basically. If you look at what a judge means or what a judge does, is that he avenges what the enemy has done to their people. And so Othniel was the one we looked at last week, and he was known as the line of God. He was Caleb's nephew. And he did powerful, mighty things. Hallelujah. And he delivered the, the people of Israel. I want to look today at Samson. Hallelujah. Samson is different. He's a different kind of a judge. I call him the Revenger Avenger, if you want to look at him that way. Because he's, he's a guy on a mission, but he's also a guy that's very strong in himself. He doesn't allow anybody to push him around. You'll see what I mean. So go with me to Judges chapter 13, the last two verses of 13, we're going to read chapter 14, and I'll lead you and guide you through it. Last week, we defined the word avenge, meaning that is to punish a wrongdoing with the intent of seeing justice done. There's a lot of injustices going around, and we need to stop that. And revenge is more personal. To define revenge means to be less concerned with justice and more about retaliation and inflicting harm. We see that a lot in Samson. But Samson's story is a different one. Like I said, his story can be broken down in three parts. He's got the power. Hallelujah. God puts the power on him. He's filled with the Spirit of the Lord. The Bible says the Spirit of the Lord comes upon him, just like it did in Othiel. And then all of a sudden, he's got no power. And then after that, he's back. And he's got the power again. Hallelujah. Those are three of the parts of Samson that is really interesting. When we think about that, what I just mentioned about he's got the power, he's got no power, and then he's got the power again. Does that sound a little familiar in our lives? We get on fire for God. And then things are going good. We may go on for a few months, or maybe a year or two or something, and things happen, and we just kind of settle down. And I remember when I first got saved, I was like that. We were unstoppable, put it that way. We were still new in the Lord, but man, we were hungry. We were on fire. Whatever I was reading, I was inhaling spiritually. My wife and I were, were just on fire. And then things happened, and I settled down a bit more than she did. She always kept a true level. But regardless, it's something that we all go through. It's kind of like a roller coaster ride. Yeah, I wish we would just keep going at that same on fireness get filled with the Holy Spirit and just continue on. But regardless, that's a lot of us. So I'm saying that sounds a little familiar with what Samson's going through. So from what I believe the Lord has shown me, there are a couple of things that I want to bring forward for all of us today. The power of the word and self-denial. It's about God's word, but also us in a crucified state. The Bible says in Galatians 2.20 that we are crucified with Christ Nevertheless, I live or we live, but it's not us that lives. It's the Spirit of God that lives within us. Yes, we live physically, but when we are crucified with Christ, it's not our flesh. It's not our, our physical bodies. It, it's our desires. Those things have got to be put down. So that's where I'm coming from. In Samson's story, we clearly see the purpose of the power of God. And we can also see a type of Christ in Samson, if you look at chapter 13, verse 5, I believe, it speaks about 
or he's going to be set apart for the purpose of God. God, you're going to bear a son. You behold, an angel comes and gives you this news, just like he did with Mary. So he's a type of Christ in that area, but also in the way he destroys the work of the enemy. So let's just take it from Judges 13.4, and let's pray first. Father God, I want to thank you for your word, for this story, oh God, and just help us to open it up. There's so many things we can see. We will not be able to cover so much stuff in there, but what we will cover, oh God, I pray that it will bless us all in the name of Jesus. Amen. So verse 24 of Judges 13, the last two verses, 24, 25, it says, So the woman bore a son and called his name Samson. Now, Samson means like the sun, brilliant. And if you look at Jesus, he's known as the son, S-U-N, of righteousness. So they kind of got the same name, the same meaning of their name. And it says, And the child grew, and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move upon him in Mahane Dan, which is the camp of Dan, because he's a Danite, he's from the tribe of Dan, between Zorah and Eshtal. Now, let's go to Judge 14, the next verse, continuing your Bible. It says, Now Samson went down to Timnah, which means portion, and saw a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. Already he's looking in the enemy's camp for a wife. So he went up and told his father, Manoah, which means rest. I think his dad was pretty an easygoing guy by his character. And mother saying, I have seen a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, get her for me as a wife. That's the first time. Then his father and mother said, Is there no woman among the daughters of, the, of your brethren or among all my people that you must go and get a wife from the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said to his father, Get her for me, for she pleases me well. Second time. Verse 4, but it says, But his father and mother did not know that it was of the Lord that he was seeking an occasion to move against the Philistines. For at that time, the Philistines had dominion over Israel. That was the purpose of his power for deliverance, to go into the camp like a spy. He went in there to get himself a wife so that he can inflict damage. Listen, when someone evil rules over you you need deliverance and that's what the philistines were they were ruling they were evil and they were ruling over the israelites now philistines spiritually we looked at it last week symbolically it means the flesh and we can all concur that most if not all christians have to one degree or, or another a daily struggle with the flesh i mean it's part of who we are we're growing out of that we're becoming more like Christ, but we have to go through. We have to realize where the problems are inside our minds. There's all kinds of ites in our minds. Joyce Myers wrote an excellent book. One of her first books was called The Battlefield of the Mind. And it had, it had all to do with the Philistines, the Hittites, the Ivites, and all these ites that was in the time of Moses. And the whole book was about that story. So that's what we have to battle inside of us. And not to be conformed into this world, according to Romans 12 too. But we have to be transformed with the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. This is what we're dealing with, with the flesh. That's why we are called to crucify the flesh. By his spirit and right choices, we can be made free from all things flesh. And that's a long process. Unless you are absolutely on fire. See, God will work with anybody who wants to work. If you want to take a break... He's ready when you finish taking your break. But if we just keep going at it, we can clean up pretty quick by his power. Thank you, Lord. See, Philistines in the biblical yesteryears instilled fear in their enemies. They were lustful. They were prideful. They were greedy. They were full of hatred, envious. They were full of anger and addictions. We kind of took a peek at that last week with Othniel. So these are all functioning spirits in the lives of men and women. And so this is what Samson was dealing with. Look at what Romans 8, 9 says. He says, but you are not in the flesh, 
but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. So we're dealing with the flesh. We're combating the flesh. But we have the spirit, so we're not to automatically operate in the flesh. We should be automatically operating in the spirit. Even though we have some weaknesses in the flesh, we should be spirit dominant inside. Hallelujah. Little side note here, the Old Testament is so loaded with lessons for us. So when we see the Philistines, when we see all those Hittites and Hivites and Perizzites and Amorites and all those Ites, the Canaanites, all those have a meaning today for us. Verse 5, let's continue on in Judges 14. Verse 5 says, So Samson went down to Timnah with his father and mother and came to the vineyards of Timnah. Now to his surprise, let's talk about Samson, a young lion came roaring against him. You're going to get that when you go in the enemy's camp. The enemy's going to roar like a lion, the Bible says. But that's all he can do. All he can do is roar. But look what Samson does. And the Spirit of the Lord, now you got to think about yourself in this situation. The lion roars, but you have the Spirit of God inside of you. Hallelujah. Such a beautiful picture. So the Spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily, and he tore the lion apart as one would have torn a young goat. In other words, like nothing. So he took care of him like nothing. Tore him apart. A young lion. Now we're not talking about a little cub. We're talking about maybe a, yeah, a juvenile lion here. Not a full-grown lion, but nevertheless, a lion that can still, if you're not careful, can still kill you. But not with Samson. Not when the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. Praise his name. Though he had nothing in his hand, it says, you know, he tore apart like a young goat. But he did not tell his father or his mother what he had done. See, this suddenness of attack will come upon anyone who is filled with the Holy Spirit. We are marked. You are marked if you are filled with the Holy Spirit. If you are a believer, especially if you're filled with the Spirit, because as you're filled with the Spirit, you're going to want to just go all out for God. You're going to do that. You're going to be noticed. You're going to be marked. That means you got a price on your head. But glory to God. Hallelujah. At least the devil knows your name in hell. I remember Jesse DePlanis said that. When the devil called him out, says, Jesse DePlanis, I'm going to kill you. But I love that. And he laughs and he goes, does the devil know your name? Does the devil know your name in hell? Well, you got to be noticed. If you're going to make a mark, if you're going to make progress in Christianity, you have to be able to, to take down the things of the enemy. Hallelujah. It's important to understand the reality that the enemy will try to surprise us, to suddenly attack us. All of his attacks are aimed at the flesh through temptation. For us, that's all it is. All he can do, see, he's powerless. But the only power he has is the power of temptation. And believe me, it's a powerful thing, the temptation, because he knows how to bring it upon us, as you know, as we all know. That's the only way he can attack us, really. That's how he did it with Jesus. <laughs> he wasn't able to do anything else. So that's it. See, Jesus fully and completely defeated him. So yes, he may roar, but he's a toothless, clawless devil that's all he can do we are not to freak out but to know the strength of the lord in us to overcome you gotta know who you are samson knew who he was and he defeated that lion as he defeated so many philistines well there's quite a story in all of this problems have a tendency to suddenly arise you notice that i mean it happens to everybody it was to his surprise so it's how we handle it that reveals the victory or the lesson. It may be a surprise to you. Now, what I mean by the victory, he had the victory. But sometimes it comes upon us, we may not get the victory, but we'll learn the lesson. And the next time, it won't be a surprise. So at the time, it may be a surprise to us. It is never a surprise to God. Thank you, Lord. So if we're filled with the Spirit of God, God will give us that power, that ability in His name the authority of the name of Jesus, the authority of the word of God that we have inside of us as we speak in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. When the spirit of God is in you, everything may look normal on the outside, the way you look. You got to understand that your hands now have become weapons as they are used by him to do his works. You know, we lay our hands. Hallelujah. So these hands all of a sudden 
a deadly weapons for the enemy. Praise God. Hallelujah. We raise our hands in worship. It's a sign that we love God. That strengthens us on the inside. Praise his name. It's a physical action, but it has a spiritual meaning. Our hands and our feet and our whole physical body become a weapon. But not in the physical sense, in the spiritual sense, because we do go places. But spiritually, you have a sword. You have a bow and an arrow. You have all kinds of weapons. You are equipped like a spiritual Samson. Isn't that great? Hallelujah. Praise his name. Let's continue on verse 7. Then he went down and talked with the woman, and she pleased Samson well. See, the first time he says, I want to go see that woman. He said a second time. That's because he was committed to go there. He had that authority about him, that power, that presence. It says in verse 7, he went down and talked to the woman, and she pleased him well. So he got to know her a bit. But after some time he returned to get her, he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. And behold, a swarm of bees and honey were in the carcass of a lion. And I thought about that. I'm going, that is so weird. But you know what? Bees actually eat the flesh of carcass of animals. Did you know that? I didn't know that. I had to look that up. That is a true fact of what we see there. It's not just a wild story. Verse 9 says, he took some of it, took some of the honey uh, in his hands and went along eating. When he came to his, his father and mother, he gave some to them and they also ate. But he did not tell them that he had eaten the honey out of the carcass of the lion. Bees can make hives in carcasses. So his father went down to the woman and Samson gave a feast there for young men. That's what he used to do. It was kind of like a bachelor party. And it happened when they saw him. And they brought 30 companions to be with him. It looks like they're kind of ganging up. They know who he is. And then Sam said to them, let me pose you a riddle. If you can correctly solve and explain to me within the seven days of the feast. So they were partying there. This was a bachelor party that lasted seven days. It was part of culture. Then he says, then I will give you 30 linen garments and 30 changes of clothing. Today's version would be like this. Y'all get a t-shirt and a pair of jeans from American Eagle. That's what he was basically saying to them. Okay, I'm, I'm going to get you guys all a brand new set of uh, linen garments. But if you cannot explain to me, then you shall give me 30 linens of garments and 30 changes of clothing. And they said to him, pose your riddle that we may hear it. So he said to them, out of the eater came something to eat. Out of the strong came something sweet. Now, this is in reference to the lion and the honey coming out of the lion. So this speaks of the devil's defeat, him coming against the enemy, coming against something that came against him, a young lion, and it speaks of our victory, something sweet. It also speaks about learning life lessons, learning how to make lemon into lemonade. So when you get something coming against you, you can turn into something good. You know, lemon is bitter, but once you make lemonade, it's easy to drink. So that's what we're talking about here. So that's the purpose in all of this. Now for three days, they could not explain the riddle. Verse 15 says, But it came to pass on the seventh day that they said to Samson's wife, They were trying, they were trying, they were trying. But now they're going to cheat. Entice your husband that he may explain the riddle to us, or else we will burn you and your father's house with fire. See how the Philistines are? They'll even burn their own. Because she was a Philistine. And sometimes you look at what was going on in the war today in Israel. Palestinians are modern-day Philistines. And what they've done to even to their own people, that same spirit is still upon them. They will burn their own. They will kill their own in order to accomplish something. And he goes on to say here, Have you invited us in order to take what is ours? Is that not so? Verse 16 says, Then Samson's wife wept on him and says, You only hate me. You do not love me. You have posed a riddle to the sons of the, my people, but you have not explained it to me. And he said to her, Look, I have not explained it to my father or my mother. So should I explain it to you? Now she had wept on him the seven days while the feasts lasted. And it happened on the seventh day that he told her. So he caves in, he tells her. He always caves into the woman. Eh? He caves into Delilah, caves into this one. 
because the Bible says, because he pressed him so much. So we see that. That was one of his weaknesses. That was his downfall. Then she explained the riddle to the sons of her people. So the men of the city said to him on the seventh day before the sun went down, what is sweeter than honey and what is stronger than a lion? And he said to them, if you had not plowed my heifer, you would not have solved my riddle. In other words, if you had not plowed into my wife and you force her and threaten her, you would have not got this riddle. So listen to verse 19, because this is Samson here. This is a, uh, this is how he is. He's like, he's, he's getting angry now. Okay. Now he's getting really angry. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily. And he went down to Ashkelon and killed 30 of their men, took their apparel and gave the changes of clothing to those who had explained the riddle. So his anger was aroused and he went back up to his father's house. That's Samson. That's how he dealt with the enemy. And that's fine. I mean, he was there to avenge, but he did it in a way of revenge also. He was an avenger. He was a judge, which means to avenge the injustices and bring back justice in the land. But he also took it personally. He was a revenger. Revenger is not even a word, but I call it the avenger, revenger, just to make it sound cool. But anyways, he, he had a lot of revenge within him. In verse 20, he says, And Samson's wife was given to his companion who had been his best man. So that was over and done with. His best man got the girl. That's what happened. So after a while, in the time of the wheat harvest, no, time went by now. So he hadn't seen his ex fiance They said his wife, they weren't married yet. This was the feast here. Let's go to Judges 15.1. It says here, After a while, in the time of wheat harvest, it happened that Samson visited his wife with a young goat. And he said, let me go into my wife, into her room. But her father would not permit him to go. Her father said, I really thought that you thoroughly hated her. Therefore, I gave her to your companion. Is not her younger sister better than she? Please take her instead. It was the culture in the day, and I'm not saying it's good or bad or whatever, but that's just what it was. The daughters were given in marriage. You say, you're marrying that guy, you're marrying that guy. And so when it came to Samson, she's not yours anymore, the first one. Now you can have her sister. You can have her and said, take her. And Samson said to them, this time I shall be blameless regarding the Philistines if I harm them. So he didn't take her. Then Samson went and caught 300 foxes and took torches, turned the foxes tail to tail, and put a torch between each pair of tail. See, he's getting revenge now. And when he had set the torches on fire, he let the foxes go into the strand, standing grain of the Philistines, which is basically theirs, and burned up both the shocks and the standing grain, as well as the vineyards and olive groves. Wow. Took all her food, took all her olives. Then the Philistine says, who has done this? And they answered, Samson, the son-in-law of the Timnite, because he has taken his wife and given her to his companion. So the Philistines came up and burned her and her father with fire. See how the Philistines are. That's how the Philistines are. That's a spirit. That's a spirit of death and a spirit of that is just on an ideology that Israel has got to be annihilated. And that's what the uh, Philistines were all about. Chapter 15, verse 7 says, Samson said to them, we're continuing the story. Since you would do a thing like this, I will surely take revenge on you. And after that, I will cease. So we attacked them hip and thigh with a great slaughter. Then he went down and dwelt in the cleft of the rock of Etam. Verse 9 says, Now the Philistines went up and encamped in Judah, Judah means praise, and deployed themselves against Lehi. And the men of Judah said, Why have you come up against us? So they answered, We have come to arrest Samson, to do to him as he has done to us. So they're coming back now. They want to get Samson. Now, the next little while, it's going to be powerful. Then 3,000 men of Judah 
went down to the cleft of the rock of Etam and said to Samson, Do you not know that the Philistines rule over us, Samson? Come on now, what did you go do there? What is this that you have done to us? And he said to them, As they did to me, so have I done to them. Revenge. It's personal for him. See, when the devil rules over you, you will experience all of his fears. But the opposite is also true. When God's agape love rules you, it lifts you and takes you away from all the enemy's fears. See, 1 John 4, 18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. And that's what the Philistines were. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Now, this should be a place of reflection for all of us. Do we have fears? Think about it. Judah was full of fear. But Samson didn't have no fears. He didn't worry about that. But they said to him, We have come down to arrest you that he deliver you into the hands of the Philistines. Then Samson said to them, Swear to me that you will not kill me yourselves. Personally, I think, I think Samson was a pretty good actor. Promise me, swear to me. He didn't have no fear, that guy. He had no fear. So they spoke to him saying, No, but we will tie you securely and deliver you into their hands. But we will surely not kill you. And they bound him up with two new ropes and brought him up to the rock. Now listen, when he came to Lehi, the Philistines came shouting against him. Then the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And the ropes that were on his arms became like flax that is burned with fire. And his bonds broke loose from his hands. In other words, psh, like nothing or psh. Oh, that was easy. But that was the Spirit of the Lord upon him. See what I mean by the Lord empowers you? He empowers you to do all kinds of stuff. I've heard testimonies where some superhuman strength come upon people. Somebody's stuck under a bus, under a car, and they manage to lift it and out of the sheer strength of the Spirit of the Lord upon them. And you wonder after, he couldn't do it again. Verse 15 says, he found, now listen, he found a fresh jawbone of a donkey now we're going to look at that reached out his hand and took it and killed a thousand men with it wow then samson said with the jawbone of a donkey heaps upon heaps with the jawbone of a donkey i have slain a thousand men see the jawbone of a donkey here we can see that as a picture of Jesus, the Word of God. The same jawbone spoke wisdom and rebuked Balaam. Because, remember, it was a donkey. Jawbone is here, this part here, the bone up here. So that's what we speak. That's what we use to open our mouth and close our mouths. So the jawbone. The jawbone of a donkey is a picture of Jesus, the Word of God. We speak the Word. The same thing with Balaam here. The same jawbone spoke wisdom and rebuked Balaam. Wisdom and rebuke kill the flesh and directs back to God. See, that's what was happening with Balaam. Balak tried to entice him to turn against the children of Israel, to bring him in a place, to set him up, because they were going to kill him. And you'll see that in the book of Numbers. But Samson here found the jawbone. It was God's provision for him. He found a fresh jawbone and used it to defeat his enemies, not an old jawbone, a fresh one. So we can defeat our enemy in all ways and from every angle when we have the freshness of God's word in us and speak it in faith. Because whenever we do it in faith, it's by the spirit. Hallelujah. So here we have a jawbone. We have a man, a jawbone representing the word, a speaking, and we have it defeating a thousand Philistines, powerful stuff, folks, powerful stuff. God used a donkey to carry the word of God. This is how powerful a, and symbolic a donkey is. He used a donkey to carry the word of God, Jesus, to Jerusalem in order for us to turn back to him. See, Jesus died for us so that we can have access back to the Father by faith in him. Jesus said, I am the way the truth, and the life. Or, I am the only way, the only truth, and the only life. 
That's why he gave his life so that we can have our life. But it's through him that we go back to God. Hallelujah. See, Solomon humbly rode David's donkey as he was being proclaimed as king. It was a preparation for the wisdom he would receive and he would speak. And it also should not be forgotten that Saul, when he was anointed king, was on a mission, so to speak, to find his father's donkeys. Since Saul would eventually meet Samuel the prophet as a result of this search, this reinforced the connection between donkeys and our communication with God. Hallelujah. We look at the horse, we look at the donkey. We look at the horse, it's like awesome. It goes fast and the donkey well. It's, like, eh, it's kind of stubborn, like a mule donkey. But the thing is, there's something humble about it. So therefore, Samson, using the jawbone of a donkey, slayed 1,000 Philistine soldiers. Now, the location of the battle at a place called Lehi, which means the hill of the jawbone. <laughs> Pretty powerful. It was right there and he used the jawbone. Now, soldiers should always be seen as religious scholars. Okay, people who know the word of God. And so immediately after escaping the slavery, these are all little tie-in points here. If you look at uh, a soldier, should always have himself a jawbone. Hallelujah. You know, because after they escaped the slavery... The Israelites became soldiers led by Moses. It gives us a picture that the word of God is a military word. It is. Because it always wars against the world of flesh and the devil. Always. No matter what. That's what Jesus used. He used the word. When you bless people, you're doing work against the enemy. You're coming against the enemy. You're building up. The word builds. Satan destroy satan brings down and we build with the word and so the word is not just about yeah i love you in the name of jesus it's about using the word against the enemy hallelujah against what the enemy's done in people's lives so the word of god is for military purposes therefore killing philistine soldiers with the jawbone of a donkey would also seem to suggest that a higher level of teaching sent by god was used to put down the new age a Philistine thought which was threatening to overwhelm the Israelites. Prophetically speaking, the number 1,000 is usually associated with an age. The Israelites were in an age. It was a new age of the Philistines of all the way they were upon Israel. They were being dominated. So this is what that jawbone represents. It's a powerful representation of the word over the enemy. I and mean, you know how much you can slay using the word of God, using the jawbone, hallelujah, praise his name. Look at Judges 16, 26 to 31. Look into what happened here. He's already lost his hair. He's been blinded. Let's look at this last part about self-denial and dying to self. So Judges 16, 26 to 31, it says, then Samson they were going to make sport of him, okay? Bring Samson up. We're going to see, you know, the great Samson, how he is. They were laughing and making sport of him. So then Samson said to the lad who held him by the hand, let me feel the pillars which support the temple so that I can lean on them. Because he was blind. Eh? Like he needed some kind of a support. Now the temple was full of men and women. All the lords of the Philistines were there, about 3,000 men and women on the roof watching while Samson performed. Then Samson called to the Lord saying, O oh Lord, remember me, I pray. Strengthen me, I pray, just this once. O oh God, that I may with one blow take vengeance on the Philistines for my two eyes. Now he was still blind. And he wanted revenge, but it was justice also. He's been humble now. His hair was cut off. He lost all of his strength. And now he's praying here. Just strengthen me this one more time. Just one more time. It was a humble plea of asking for strength. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars which supported the temple. Basically what he was doing here is he positioned himself between what supported or what represented all of the Philistines' beliefs and all of the way they were all the evil that they were against Israel, all what the enemy had done in their lives as a people, the Philistines. 
They become idol worshippers. They had Dagon as their god. And so it says here, it was in between the two middle pillars, right in the smack of the middle. It's a picture of right being right in the middle of hell. And then all of a sudden, in hell, so to speak, you got to see this picture, and all of what it represents, and he braced himself against them, it says, one on the right, one on the left, Satan's temple is weak in the sight of the Lord. There's nothing there. There's nothing. It's totally weak. Now, he got filled again. So he was filled. So then Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he pushed with all his might. Now, we're talking about a temple here. Rock. We're talking stuff that's heavy. Then Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he pushed with all his might. And the temple fell on the Lord and all the people were in it. So the dead that he killed at his death, okay, there was more, there's about 3,000, were more than he had killed in his life. All the time since he became a Nazarite and he became used of God and he did what he did. What he did there was he killed more in one time than all the other times put together. And his brothers and his father also came down and took him and brought him and buried him between Zorah and Eshtal, in the tomb of his father Manoah, and he judged Israel 20 years. You see what happens when we turn our heart toward God. He is ready to pick up where we left. When he left, he was weakened, but God restored him. Hallelujah. So he didn't have to wait a long time. Well, I can't do it right now. He humbly prayed to God, and he took down the whole system. It's a picture of Jesus defeating all of hell when he went down in the grave. Hallelujah. When he took the keys and authority, Samson with the authority of God, by the power of God, took down those pillars and everything came down. The whole system came right down. Hallelujah. What supported the system, the temple represented their system. It's what Jesus did. It's what we can do by his power. Hallelujah. See, when we turn our hearts toward God, He comes in, continues where we left off. James 4, 8 says, Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. See, James doesn't mince his words. He says it the way it is. This is an amazing story. There's a lot more in all of it. I was giving you guys an understanding here of what this Revenger Avenger was like. Hallelujah. He was different than the others because he had this superhuman strength that he could kill a thousand men. Like, I mean, you try, I tried boxing for three minutes down in the basement. I was 13 years old. I was thin. And I remember when my cousin, we had boxing gloves on. We would just, we did some friendly boxing. But after three minutes, and I was in good shape. I was in good physical shape, but I wasn't conditioned to it. But still after three minutes, I was, I was, I was out of breath. I could like, I remember that clearly. But him, imagine that. A thousand men, heaps of men, just coming pow, pow, pow. Like it takes superhuman strength. Hallelujah. Uh, he's quite the man of God. He was different than everybody else. Hallelujah. So I hope you guys got something out of that today. I hope you guys realize that we know we can be filled with the Spirit of God. Maybe not in the physical sense, like Samson, but what he represents physically, we can do spiritually, totally defeat the enemy. Hallelujah. And we can always be that way if we're on fire with God. And remember that. Stay on fire with God. Hallelujah. Hunger and thirst for His Word, and God will give you every victory along the way. Hallelujah. And when you do fail, you get right back up and you continue. You don't mope. You just shake it off and you go. So I hope you guys have a great week and remain strong in the Lord and in his word. Hallelujah. Hope to see you next week. God bless.